Ey olan bütün halkların hakları gibi haklar. Ne aşağı ne yukarı, ne fazla ne az. And I'm feeling that that may result from decades of repression and people who've had members of their family killed by that regime. A lot of killers. Get a lot of killers. Why you think our country's so innocent? But I won't attack it because someone fixed me up. I don't let anybody use me to fight their battles. Hello, welcome to Barn Blog, and today we are talking with Natty Smith of Superstructure Podcast, Money on the Left, and Medium Femme, which are all kind of a conglomerate thing together. Yeah, it's all Money on the Left, and we just put different names and different shows and release it. It's uh, it's our boutique method. <laughs> yep. Um, and um, this is thank you for returning. Um, sure. Thanks I for was having talking. Me again. I was talking about how you were probably somewhat in demand as we want people actually on the ground in Chile to explain this. Um, yeah. um, I try. I try. I always feel like it's like a, you, you want to do your best to like give it a, a reasonable gloss. And it's like, I'm not Chilean either. So you want it, but you also want to give like people who are in the English speaking world the best idea that's out there. So you try to see what you can read and such. Yeah, I, I think... I think the part of the problems with the English speaking re world's reporting of this is uh, there is a tendency of both the quote anti imperialist left and the Jacobin social democratic left to take any action in South America without complication. Uh, I've had this, I've pushed back on narratives about AMLO and stuff where I'm much more familiar. Um, I, I feel much more competent talking about uh, uh, Mexican like People politics. want to win. They want that sense of a win. You know what yeah. I mean? Which I, I really get. That makes sense. But yeah, it can definitely be like, you kind of realize too late almost. Like, oh, that maybe like had some issues. Yeah. And, Which and, you is know, just I, an information issue. I mean, for people in a place, too, always there's lots of different information happening, you know? So it's sort of something you want to contest is important. Yeah, uh, totally. And and so I suppose one, one of the interesting things about this is, like, the initial win in Chile uh, yeah. got a lot of press in the social democratic press, I would maybe even in right, the, right, like right. general progressive press in America, but it wasn't yeah, very yeah. thorough. You got you got a Susan, Sur you got like a Roger Waters statement. Exactly, like <laughs> you got a Roger Waters statement. You got like like something in the back of the Nation and an article yeah, in, in yeah. Jacobin and a couple of articles in Jacobin online, right? Like right. Um, uh, I feel like it even got less. Like Jacobin does run some good art because you know how Jacobin like has academics write stuff that are. It's like Jacobin has different things where it has like its party line pieces. It has its like let's right. be against identity politics pieces, and then it has like oh, an academic who's done some solid research pieces. It's just yeah. like kind of a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jacobin's interesting in that regard, particularly in regards to understanding the international left, because yeah. Often in that magazine, if you also include their online portion, you will get pink colored glasses information, mm -hmm. sometimes outright disinformation and the actual yeah. information in an interview somewhere. And it's and like it's all there. Well, it's like um, a media thing, too. They're just putting out more stuff. I mean, exactly. Yeah. There's a churn. Um, yeah. And. One of the things I wanted to to talk to you about um, was the context for this this referendum versus, say, um, the election. Maybe getting a, a more basic level ground feel for um, sure. 
what the parties are because there okay. did seem to be some um there's i was talking to another friend of mine who uh, his family is from chile and okay. we were trying to piece together um what the indigenous uh response played into this what what the fact that the referendum was mandatory played yeah, into this yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. um uh how popular the current president is how how like how covid has played into this cycle and maybe isn't anymore there's there's a lot going on here and yeah. um doing politics never failed to have a lot going on on some level that's no when i talked to a you know on the cardonas <sighs> recently and we were trying right. to explain it to people it was a three hour it was a three hour oh, podcast yeah. and I didn't cover a third of what I wanted to cover. I was reading, I was reading actually like the small Chilean trot blog today. And they had like a thing, like after this, like, let's talk about the cordones again. Like, come on, you know, it's like, Oh, I mean, cute. Good work. Um, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Good work. I'm, I'm for it. Uh, I'm all about, you know, I, I love the cordones in a lot of ways. It proves a right. whole lot of alternate organizational modes are possible. However, right. um, you gotta get a constitutional like, referendum first. No, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> there's no reason you would not want to like have a constitution. You know, like that's the, for so many things makes a huge difference. Like, yeah, for labor reforms, for having different systems with pensions and healthcare and so forth. I mean, all those things make a difference. And and. That's a lot of what there was a reaction against. I mean, you asked a lot of questions in there. I guess the mandatory voting bit is interesting because the um, 2021 vote for for the convention electorates had really high abstention. That was also for the Muni elections. But mm -hmm. now with a mandatory vote, I think I would have to double check my numbers. But I think like more than 90 percent of these people voted reject. And like it was a very... Ur, like big urban areas that usually go left didn't and it was a higher lower middle class like urban periphery vote that's apoliticized so it's like it was sort of this like sense of um especially with some fake news too like cyper this kind of like uh investigatory place did their um ciper i guess uh did like interviews with some of the popular comunas, like 12 of them, of why people were voted reject. And a lot of it was like, the number one reason was, well, my house, I'm not going to be able to like pass down to my kids. Also in there was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to pass down to my kids, my pension fund, the private pension fund. Oh, Boric. I don't like Boric right now. Uh, there's uh, a lot of law and, law and order stuff that's all mixed up. Yeah. I mean, the stuff with the South, I think was really central with the, the reaction to, I mean, that's always part of Chilean reaction, right? Is this ongoing forever, basically fight in the South with Mapuche and you have the forestry, like paper and pulp industry down there. And so there's always like, just, and it's a right-wing stronghold, like one of the only two places that uh, voted for Pinochet in the 88 plebiscite in the South. Mm. Uh, he, he had like his developmentalist highway, but there's just been like always kind of ongoing shuffle scuffles. And then this center left, like has tried to kind of play to the center in a way. Like, so this one minister of, of Burek went down to the South and was like shot at. And so there's just, and then they're like putting people in jail and like, you know, this is just an ongoing there's not really a left that's against Aprevo, right? But it's still this element of the center left that returns. So, so there's a sense of, oh, the center's mad at us because we're not cracking down hard enough. There's the far right that's like, oh, this is somehow connected to the FARC and narco trafico and like, you know, the Venezuelan migration from the right and um, crime and blah 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 and then but this is just chile has a very strong euro mestizo euro identity like it's just an ongoing thing like i think it was interesting when i was talking to camilo gomez the other day how he said oh that's like different than most latin american countries in a way 
like that it's so central this sort of mapuche versus the state thing because that maybe it's more integrated some places i don't know but there was a very i don't know like a, a deep this plural nationality in the constitution and having a certain amount of res reserve seats and there was a very deep reaction to that which i think um you can't you can't undersell in a lot of ways yeah i i think so the you know there's a lot to unpack here yeah. um yeah. let's first start off with boric versus uh sure um the prior president Piñera Piñera yeah Piñera yeah Piñera um uh -huh. and you know Boric's been you know Boric's only been there since March um and I've had a hard time really figuring out exactly his um relationship to Piñera and uh -huh. and and you know how much is how much is he seen as an extension? No, or, no. Or repudiation or, you know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, Boric, Boric is like, like he's like been a student leader since like he was kind of this generation of the 2011 student leaders who pretty mm -hmm. much right after that went into politics like and became deputies. Uh, him and Giorgio Jackson, who I once got on a fight with in Twitter about like posting a photo of himself with Richard Dawkins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on for the communists, Carol, Cariola and uh, Camila Vallejo, but he's been in there forever. And mm -hmm. he, uh, yeah, it's interesting because in 2019, he was part of, so he's sort of been in the Frente Amplio, this broad front of the left for a long time. And he was, there was a deal in November 2019 after the initial protests in October against Piñera and he um, sort of went against his party Convergencia Social and some on the left and, and signed in his own name for the deal that did uh, lead to there being a, a plebiscite for a new constitution which had you know which ended up being voted on in 2020 and was like 80 percent of the people voted for it no but he's definitely a repudiation of Piñera I mean those initial 2011 protests were during Piñera's first term mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, but Boric is definitely like seen as of the left. Now, some will say, oh, he's amarillo, you know, like he's yellow, which is like Latin American for like Coward. train. Yeah, traitor. well, and also traitor, like right. centrist traitor. Yeah. Yeah. To the left. But he's still kind of seen as the left, as of the left. So still seen as a sort of, but, but yeah, does have um, elements of this sort of, this real tendency since the dictatorship in Chilean politics of the center left, what was the concertacion for 20 years, but is always mm -hmm. seen as um, making compromises, which is in a lot of ways true. And then he's sort of of the center left that wants to repudiate them, but then has some of the same tendencies. But yeah, he's interesting yeah. too, in like a Latin American context yes. and that he's, he's not of the tanky left like in a, in a good way you know like he's 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 Gioconda Veli before Ortega do you know what I mean which mm -hmm. but there's also you know I someone like someone in the communist party might still say something like he's bourgeois you know stuff like I don't know there's just he has a complicated role on the left but is seen as as of the left I was you know so um, well one of the things about about Boric that that has like been interesting to compare him with the say the Peruvian situation um is that Boric is also seen as socially quite yeah. quite progressive quite urban I mean his, his yeah. cabinet ministers has the first although LGBT. he mm -hmm. did have a controversy with the recent election not really a controversy but his I don't know if it's his girlfriend or his wife but she mm -hmm. had like a faux pas where she said it was like the first election women could vote in it's just like, what are okay. you, what is that? What are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. Like, all right. Um, so you're like, I don't need, I don't need the, the social <laughs> faux pas of the, <laughs> no, I, it, it's more just like, that's, that's, that's a strange comment. I don't even know. I don't have enough yeah. context to know where that would come from. And she's from. seen as like feminist. So it's just weird. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing. Chilean politics is just has a lot going on all the time. And that's part of politics is people say stuff and you're just like, I don't, 
know what's going on? Do I need to read more about this? Maybe I have it wrong. Yeah, so I've been trying to get a, a, a sense of who, who, what's the coalition of the broad front? I mean, how is that different from uh, like uh, the, 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 the socialist front on the end day or the like center left uh, again. government? Yeah. Ah, okay. Are, are the center left governments of the 90s like. Um, yeah, the, it's like a thing where they try to work with them, but also be different. It's like, it's to be kind of honest, it's kind of like the younger person version of it. And so they have like a relatively friendly, but some, somewhat mm. uh, antagonist. But for example, now with this loss, like Boric and his cabinets making gestures to that center left. And I also think within the Congress, they actually... The center left, center left, the old, like the, the Socialist Party, which is, you know, more neoliberal now. Bachelet came from the PPD, the Party for Democracy. Mm -hmm. So they actually have a deep, like a pretty similar number of uh, seats to the, that's like the Christian socialism block of the left. And then there's another block, which is the communists with the different parties of Frente Amplio, the broad front, which is like conversants. Convergencia Social and of Boric and Revolución Democrática of, of Boric. I mean, sorry, of Giorgio Jackson. But they kind of each have a similar amount of the left. And so, for example, he's gotten rid of some of his ministers from those parties and gotten some from the center left. Uh, it's it's a complicated relationship. You know, he he's tried to make some gestures to left members of Christian democracy, things like this. How has, uh, you know, um, approved dignity? Um, I, yeah, that's I, the I one. That's the one that's uh, the broad front and the communists. Yeah. yeah. So how has that? Um, yeah, th that's the broad front. That's Communist Party. That's the social. That's what the social greens. I think that's what they. Yeah, been although they with. have like very small representation. The Equity yeah. Party, the Humanist Party. I was going through there's the parties, parties and I was like, yeah. these seem tiny. <laughs> yeah, there's some really tiny ones. Like actually, I was looking at the numbers too, and I realized like the because you have the main right wing coalition Chile mm -hmm. Vamos, which is uh, RN, like the Piñera Republican Party, and UDI. That's like fascist fascist but then you have the even more fascist ones who are not in that coalition mm -hmm. and they have as many representatives as the that's the caste party and they have as many representatives as the communists um so it's yeah so what is the what is the parliamentary spread right now actually i had it pulled up but it's like it's basically like the senate they don't really have the left doesn't really have the congress is like pretty close but they don't have it by like one vote but there's like enough Christian Democrats that like if they get enough Christian Democrats who are in the center and not in either of the left coalitions that they can win some stuff, but a lot of stuff can get blocked. So they don't have that great a situation. So it's like it, it is following the kind of like um, polarized close politics that we've seen in a lot of the like uh, developed, well, Chile's developed, but the, 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 the Euro, let's say the, the Anglo Euro world. Um, yeah to be more fair yeah um, well, it was a, would have been a big deal a thing with the constitution to to uh abolish the senate because it is that is less representative mm -hmm. also like the constitution they've changed it some over the years but it used to have more issues with like the binomial system where the right-wing parties had a higher representation because if you like place second you still got a seat kind of something like that mm -hmm. and so I suppose then this brings us up to the Mapuche element of this. And that's, that's something that I kind of understand a little bit about, but it, it's hard. Cause I don't live in the South either. So I don't <laughs> fully get it either. Okay. Like I do in a way, but I don't live in the South. Like, and it, that's its own thing too, you know? Right. I well, one thing that people in Amer uh, in, in the North need to remember, if Chile is a very, very long country, and while um, it doesn't take that long to cross diagonally, uh, I mean, horizontally, if you if you no. cross vertically, it takes forever. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of regional difference between areas. Although, although some of that, like, like the core of the South and is like, mm. I, I would... I've not like driven that by car, but I would guess it's like 11, 12 hours. Okay. But the, because a lot of the length gets down into like the, 
archipelago how do you say that word Ar- archipelago zone and right the and then also zone. with the atacama but still you have with the atacama where they say like uh norte chico and norte grande like small north and big north like because they have like it's all desert but there's like levels of desert but it's big but the core of the country is closer like closer in, like the core of the urban south and north is on average not all as far from santiago as the extreme north and extreme south got it yeah um and roughly so the the the, the, the center of the country you know around santiago is it's fairly left wing um yeah it goes it goes more that way yeah Right. Um, and Val- Valpo too, which is like west. That's like the that's Valpo and Vina, although Vina is like right wing. But that is also like that's like a million, two million people urban on the coast. But it's like a two, hmm. three hours west from Santiago. So we've talked about some of the issues. Uh, has Boric's presidency, and it, it's still very new. Mm-hmm. What's his popularity right now? Not that good. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of backlash to Boric. Which Mm -hmm. probably was inevitable in a way, because he, like, it's like you have a sort of tepid social democratic program with a certain radicalism and radical gloss and don't have Congress and also are trying to play to the center. And there's this reaction about migration, about crime, about the South. There's this ongoing uh, constitution process that gives an opportunity for reaction. I think there was a strong... I think his popularity is like 30% right now, but there was a strong element of like people being like, no, I'm not going to vote for Budik because like he wants to take my home. And you mentioned COVID before. And I think, I think there's part of what helps reaction too is that, yeah, you have like where he's in power and sort of the constitution was this ongoing celebration almost for 10 months of like, we got another progressive thing. We got another progressive thing. And, um covid had kind of initially de- demobilized protests right cuz you had the protest cycle late 2019 the original plebiscite was going to be april 2020 so people went to summer january february and then march everything was coming back like gearing up with the protest cycle again to prepare for that april plebiscite but then covid hit and then you wait till later in the year when it passes 80%. But that just demobilized a lot of things. And then, yeah, Boric is in power. And by the way, an interesting thing is that, like, the same number of people pretty much voted for the Constitution as for Boric. But you just have, like, way more voting. Because of this time, it hadn't been, it had been the first obligatory vote since, like, 2009. And almost everybody who voted, who doesn't vote, voted against it. But, um... What was I saying? But that's so interesting, co- though. Yeah. I actually, like, the assumption, and I think it's because it's true for for the U.S. and also true for a lot of Europe, is mandatory yeah. voting tends to favor progressives. And, and I think the progressives think that way, too. Prob- on the app. Like, just as kind of a knee-jerk, I feel. I don't right. know what the right-wing cultures are as much as voting. Somebody asked, somebody asked me about that. Like, I was wondering. I was like, does the right-wing have the same sense of like sort of a sort of sense of duty about total voting i'm not sure because i've heard that a lot from progressives but i don't i know their opinions a little better well it, it's interesting because I, I i even wonder if it's true in the united states because while mandatory voting or not mandatory we didn't have, we've never had mandatory voting but no. really easy voting and high voter turnout favored the yeah. progressives but not nearly at the margin that they thought it yeah. would um and that's so, so progressive on some level like if we like, just get people to vote real people <laughs> believe us <laughs> they really like, do like they, us do they, they believe people. you i don't know <laughs> right. people are kind of mean <laughs> yes <you know. laughs> seemingly basic but also kind of true point um it's been interesting to me because in the American uh, left that we were talking about earlier and the international response to this, I think there has been a, and I I speak to this having spent, you know, eight years abroad, but now being back for five. Um, When I first came back, no one was shut the fuck up about Europe. 
Like what? Like what about Europe? Like everything in Europe, you know, we they still had Corbyn. They were constantly thinking that like the left in France was gonna was gonna not just you know defeat Macron. Um, that like yellow SP- vest is the most magical right. thing that ever. Yeah, happened. exactly. Yellow right, vest right, right. means we're gonna yeah. have this great progressive future. Um, That's funny. And you know, I I was like, well, the yellow vest is kind of a working class movement, but it's a working class movement that has like a crazily broad political character. Um, oh, yeah. And then S- sketchy, I right. would say. <laughs> then basically, they get crushed in the UK. They get mm-hmm. crushed mm-hmm. in France, more or less. I mean, like I've I've had French socialists yeah. come on my show and try to convince me it was not nearly as bad as it seems like it was but it seems mm. pretty bad um even though macron right. is unpopular the mm. popular front gets a little bit closer to taking country every right, round right the, the um, center the center still packs a vicious punch right so it's kind of crazy in chile like the, <laughs> the after only getting one seat in the constitutional convention, like the Christian Democrats, like almost collapsed. I mean, like the press was like having so much fun, just like mm-hmm. making fun of them and their emergency meetings. But they have like come back with a vengeance in a way, having key figures who like ironically took on the name like Amarillos for Chile, Yellow for Chile, but also some in the left. And so it's just, you know, doing what Christian Democrats tend to do on in Chile, which is like, accidentally vitalize the everyone in Chile talks about like the three thirds, like the left, the center and the right that have just persisted a long time. And the Christian Democrats in the worst moments think they're, they're just like, they'll have the right two or three people seed to the right in a way that just is awful. But even if those parties aren't popular, they come in certain moments to be popular. People believe in the police. People believe in centrism you know, people believe in us not being right wingers, but you know, people in Chile have been watching protests for month for years now, and they're just, you know, there is a center that's just like. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you because <laughs> I think, and I think it's true in America too, and I don't. I actually think leftists have not really been paying attention to this, um, where where there has been a movement towards the center and a moment of left victory we can think about that in blm in 2020 um yeah and then a mobilization on the right same thing yeah and a mobilization on the right and the mobilization of the right scares centrists but they don't scare them to the left no no they scare them they have to discipline the left (laughs) right they scare them to the center and the left gets disciplined now regardless what i find interesting about that and that dynamic because you know if you'd have talked to me 10 years ago i would have said well chile would not be on a similar dynamic to the united states and i i am hesitant to say that the us's dynamics is the same as the rest of the world but in some sense one of the lessons of covid has been the center is stronger than you think it is. Um, yeah. It can be yeah. seemingly yeah. totally about to fall apart yeah. and yet somehow emerge at the end of this thing victorious. Yeah. And no one really has an explanation for why. And nobody likes them. You know, like when the center is in power, just they don't have anybody who likes them. But then in an emergency, people want them, you know. But my, my reason for bringing up Europe as a contrast here yeah. is the, the American yeah. leftist attention in the last three years, some of which I burned on Michael Brooks for good and ill. Um, Michael Michael has that element. Yeah, <laughs> Rest um, in peace. Maybe yeah. all of us do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I wish people will, people will say probably far worse things about me when I'm dead. But um, the... The... Uh, there was a shift of focus, I think, primarily on Brazil, but also on this hope of a pre-early aught teens return of a pink wave. And this mm-hmm. time happening in the places where it skipped, because Ch- Chile kind of was counter-cyclic to the, to the pink wave, actually. Um, 
Uh, I mean, Bachelet had like a relative. Bachelet kind of had the relationship he always has to the left. It's just mm-hmm. like a relatively decent relationship, but not seen as like left left, you know. But she knows how to like have a cocktail with Evo and with right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To keep a good relationship up. Yeah, not uh, against them, but not oh, you know. I don't know. And then the situation in Bolivia uh, put people back on paying attention. It seemed like they had victories in Colombia. Still hasn't totally, just not totally sure about that yet. Uh, Peru and I, I completely defer to, <laughs> I completely defer to Andres. No. <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 um, Andres and I are going to talk about Colombia soon. Oh, actually. nice. Yeah, that's um, But uh, and then Peru, Pedro Castillo. Yet, yeah, that's I. It's hard for me to get a full feel for Peruvian politics, even though it's like Chile's neighbor. People forget how heterogeneous the region. Same as Argentina. I I try my best, but I don't have like a great feel for yeah, any Argentina, of those places. I was trying to figure out what faction of Peronists were what and who was left and oh. who was right, and they all have the same name. And it's just like, oh no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, that's like so. That's the kind of thing where you do on some level need to be there or have been there and know who to follow so because right. that, that's so social in a way like which parentist are we mad at i don't know that's exactly <laughs> and, and like, i mean I even, even stuff for example um <laughs> that that you just need to read spanish for and i mean like i do yeah. but like I, i've pointed out to people um there was a the nationalization of the lithium mines uh in mexico was scuttled more or less but not by the United States, but by China. And like, oh. that's all over the Spanish language press. Oh yeah. I'm not like seeing right, a right American Like right-wing finance coverage. people in, in Chile, at least, and I'm assuming throughout the region, like they follow harder mm. almost than, yeah, they follow that really closely. Right. Like, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And that's what they follow, like finance. Like they follow US stuff too, but that's like more to like be a, dick and get their political signals like the stuff they follow for their paycheck is like is in china yeah it's it's, it's china it's the uh, relations yeah. to chinese flows of currency and it, it it was interesting that like since there's been this awakening and focus on latin america and the u.s left uh the dsa talking about sending a caucus the, their whole international committee thing i don't know I how so far old gone. school it's just like this like tendency in the u.s left that's like very nostalgic for well, I yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's interesting because I was kind of laughing when I'm like, you're so you're going to be an observer to a Congress of groups of parties that yeah, it's like, who cares too? Like, like that to me also is like, I mean, it's fine. It's good. But it's also like a lack of appreciation for that, like. A lot of maybe maybe this is just the Chile in me, because in Chile, like it's like a pretty regular thing to just like be like a kind of left citizen or right citizen and like go observe elections, go to. T- I just feel like parties are in contact and already observing, and DSA par- acts sometimes. It's like inventing the wheel to like get on a plane and do a, an observe observation. It's like yeah, that's just like a regular thing. It's not that deep. Like I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's just that, like not that special that you can like observe. I don't. <laughs> people already do that. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, that's like it's it's a strange but. it's a strange situation. But the, the focus, I think that that people I, reason why I think this got so much focus in America, yeah. uh, other than the fact that they mm-hmm. had no context for it. Um, <laughs> like I I heard the night of the loss of the referendum, I saw more people talking about Chile. Mm. at one time who i've never seen even fucking talk about south america it's like a processing that's that's interesting to like see what registers right interesting right and it was very interesting to watch Mm. because i was i was watching people do postmortems and i'm like did you even know who boric was a week ago why funny i forget i forget sometimes yeah like Wait, yeah, and then so it, it, I forget, which is weird. Is like an American who's like I, I've been here a long time, so you forget like who you used to be or something. Like you forget that people don't know stuff, and maybe people who are of it don't forget in the same way. I don't know. It's funny. It well, it's it's interesting to me because I 
I, I'm Rita, Rita overly you. cheery and overly sad Ariel Dorfman article and feel like. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Sorry. Um, it's a good writer. One of the things that I get from this is I'm torn on it because on one uh -huh. hand, I'm glad that people are actually fucking showing interest in the region. On right. another hand, seeing people pontificate on something that I know that I don't feel comfortable for pontificating on. And I, you know, um, it, interesting. and I get asked questions about this a lot. Yeah. Um, I, because what do you think? Coast. What do you think being the, what do you, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. But I'm always take like, much of an interest in Mexican politics. Eat, I mean, barely. no, I'm actually surprised when, yeah. like when people are pro AMLO because, because, well, that, because, yeah, that's like step one out of like 10 million, but for right. our culture, it's like really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like trying to explain <laughs> like, well, yeah. I mean, I remember mm. sitting down and was like, okay, I need to explain to you the Mexican civil war and like, how AMLO is a yeah. full son from it. Like, even right. though that's not I mean, a that, that is war. honestly like one of the deepest strains of like American fascism and tragedy is like how much we don't give a fuck about Mexico. This huge name. I mean, this is a huge country, huge population. Our neighbor. Yeah. The Mexican Revolution. Huge deal. Right. Like, okay. and not and like in the 20th century. <laughs> and it, well, and it, it, it is it, really sad and fascist how it's not yeah yeah no totally and and one of yeah. the things that's it's still what bugs me a little bit about this is i'm still having more people seem more interested in what chile which it, i'm happy about in i some didn't degree. realize it was just now which i think i mean camilo kind of gestured at when we did an interview but i didn't but i realize it you know i just visit every now and then but i will realize like oh like you know people are like so like what happened? Like, what was going on with the protests? And I'm just like, oh, I mean, you know, obviously whatever shit that's bad, like, it's, yeah, it's just was like a regular protest cycle that happened to like win. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a protest cycle, like always. And they like had a good one, you know, but it, people kind of have this like, oh, so like what was going on? I'm like, I don't know how to explain that. It's just like, that's a very centrist, apoliticized point of view that I, I do forget about a little and didn't, and don't mean to, you know, but I, I think I was like that in the aughts, probably in the U.S., but I don't know. Latin America, that isn't like as much of a thing because even the center is more. There is some of that American thing of like a center that wants to believe that it's not pro-police and politicized, right? Like, and that isn't mm -hmm. doing this kind of reaction. But I just I do feel like in Latin America, people lie to themselves a little less about that so i was um, gonna ask you about that because um there there was a lot of gestures towards w radical rhetoric even in the center of the democratic party in 2020 um and that was um not unproblematically but probably not as much as certain writers want to make it out what to be mean, problematically what do you mean like radically like what, uh, what what do you mean by radical like there was gestures towards prison abolition through defund the police, which is something the defund part of it. I particularly dislike, um, okay. but I, I, I was surprised that there was even gestures to it coming out of fairly center politicians in blue States. Um, Were there? Yeah. Um, but like, like who? Sorry, I well, just, I mean, um, because I feel like all those people are like ready to crack. I mean, well, that's even thing, like the even, the, even the Jacobin left is like gonna cut out pretty quickly. Anyone, else. I mean, but that's the thing, it was so fast. Like, the 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 the, the rhetoric was adopted and then dropped within the same year, and that okay. and that 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 what I what I was amazed at was not. That I believe they would do it, at all. Right. Not that I believe they even meant it. You mean you? Do you mean kind of like an ill like like kind of an Ilhan element of like the left that's like been punished no. now somewhere like Minneapolis where the the center almost took them out or see because I'm not in the U S so I don't. Right. Well, what I would say is in Chicago you saw this rhetoric in, in California you saw this rhetoric picked up by DAs, um, okay. and now those same people have been punished for I mean, it. Pretty Chicago severely. is. I mean, yeah, like Lori Lightfoot is just. Uh, yes, I know that 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 was very much a talk. What 
you know, out of one end of your mouth while also inviting the police in another. I, I mean, like, that. No, they love the police. It's no, she, no, yeah, but she loves the police. I'm, did you see it? Is that true? Did she say defund? She was playing to me, with the rhetoric. To me, she's like a police hawk. She is, but she was playing yeah, with the rhetoric. Like, I see. Better. I see. There was a. So you're saying there's people who are using the rhetoric. Like Jackson, right. Hing- oh, I see. Okay, okay. right, right. Okay, like okay. who were immediately authentic defund does get left resistance. Yeah. Oh yeah, even no. I, I okay. Um, I I'm not saying that there was this shift to from prison abolition to defund, from defund to reallocation and smart allocation of resources. But even that, to me, was surprising because that was giving okay. headway to this rhetoric at all. And then right. immediately, I mean, they, they were shook by they were shook right. by 2020. And then immediately, as right. soon as the um, the murder rate went up, now people's understanding of the murder rate's wrong. Wow. The murder rate is like way higher. Like the the the, the, the just, place with the highest hard, murder it's, rate. In it's the hard States. for me. I'm from Illinois, and it's just like if anybody talks about crime, Chicago just again, like, right? My like alarm bells are going off. Just like well, you know, what I was about to say is like. Um, <laughs> Chicago, even as the worst neighborhood in Chicago, the absolute uh-huh. worst neighborhood in Chicago has like 20 per 100,000 murders a year, um, okay. which is what's, not good. What's average? Six. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, but, but that's always been, I mean, that's always been a part of the landscape for a really long time in, in the urban north. I but, mean, but that's what why I Black Lives about, Matter is an urban Northern, Midwest. It's, a, it's an urban Midwest yeah. thing. And it's actually, yeah. like, this was my point. Um, yeah. The worst city for, however, yeah. homicides in the United States is Jackson, Mississippi. It's, 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 a, it's apartheid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. it's Jackson, yeah. Mississippi. Oh. And it has a similar murder rate to Honduras. Yeah, I don't I don't think well yeah. And the thing the thing about Illinois is like I mean there is like a huge white racist element outside Chicago that's like right. you know if you take like Amtrak from Chicago towards downstate you get to a certain point and you'll have like a white what are they called on trains? It's not a, a not a conductor. The people working on the train will be like good glad to be outside Chicago like all the blood that's running and stuff, you know, and you're just like, Jesus Christ. Just... Yeah, it's, it's funny. Because <laughs> it, like, what, that, that 20 per 100,000 is only for one neighborhood. It's like a very specific, it's the poorest, most of color part of Chicago. Yeah, there's places and... with like very real issues and those places have also been over the years now gentrified. Those places have police violence. Those places have total withdrawal of of public employment those places have severe right, exactly. apartheid right i mean there's just you know really serious intense things that go on right like and, right. and yeah i don't know the south as well i but i the yeah, south the southeast yeah. is where most of the most violent uh, parts of the country uh, are and oh, yeah, then, the south, I mean, yeah, yeah and and they're not even all like it's not even the major cities with the exception of again two neighborhoods in new orleans but everything else is like mid-sized cities and the industrial. New Orleans is funny that way. New Orleans is different from the North. I in that mm-hmm. like I notice it matters street to street. That's not how the North works. Right. Well, that's true in most southern cities, actually. Okay, that's interesting. Like, like in my home, my hometown of Macon, uh, if you change, like, uh, you can be on one street and walk mm, on another street, and the and the the amount of violence can escalate right. dramatically. Yeah. Whereas the um, North is like, blocks. yeah, just big blocks. Yeah. Um. That's partly due to like racial apartheid mixed with 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 that being deliberately encouraging gang culture and those two things mm-hmm. coming in together. So mm-hmm. this is kind of a digression, but it's a digression to make a point. Um, sure. All this stuff is misleading in American media, right? And somehow the the Democrats have been able to play to both this tendency to liberalize pro-police reform and also throw tons more money at the cops uh push push law and order local uh local politicians and even as we've seen in california now um push back against even fairly moderate da's um and that was that was really intense in sf yeah um and that tendency love the police 
They do. Um, <laughs> they really um, do. It's really um, bad. <laughs> um, I remember talking to someone about this recently, and I was like, if incarceration worked, then our murder rate would be lower because we have the highest incarceration rate of any country that has probably ever existed. People just so, don't care. It's just such a deep feeling. It's just like, no, I think you're wrong. It's going to work. But what I, what I find interesting about that is, for example, in Mexico, um, there is a law and order component to a lot of things. That's how the PRI, and specifically the PRI, not the pound, which is the more right wing really People, I mean, like, police abolition is not, I mean, that that is not a, like, it's not even on the left as strong. A, I mean, there's a lot of ACAB discourse, but like as a movement is not the strongest on the left, I would say. And there's a lot of paranoia. I mean, I say that all the time to people. They're like, look, but people rob and, and there's, you know, there's just a revolving door at, at prison. And it's weird. I mean, like when I was first here along like 10 plus years ago, like, a uh, like prison burned down in South Central Santiago, 80 people died and there's still not a huge discourse, but it's also not like the U.S. where just like everybody's put in prison not everybody like it's super racialized poverty but the numbers are still just like compared to almost anywhere like really high but it's like more main a lot of latin america has like horrible prisons and like i don't know it's just like not a move i don't, I don't know i feel like i'm saying a lot of different things but no but for example no one in mexico loves federalis nobody does right right however right. Uh -huh. yeah they're also uh -huh. scared shitless oh yeah of the templars and the zetas who are no longer really around and right, even right, the are some of the more mafia-based cartels uh -huh. and not with no reason i mean like, no, i get it yeah and the thing the thing is it leads to a, the discourse around law and order in mexico was really strange because on one hand no. nobody wants to look like they're on the side of the cops at all right yeah, just no, there's nobody to side with, really. Right. Yeah. Um, but they do want someone to take care of the cartel violence, which right. in, in, in border towns, I, I get that. I mean, I, it's I like a war that. situation a lot right. of years. I mean, yeah. And so there's a... Which in Chile has not been true over the years, but like people, and so well, that's you're not part close of what to the United States helps. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for sure. But that's part of why there is a reaction to migration. Like I think it's like 1.5 million or so, mostly like um, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Haiti, and and there's a big sense of like, oh, there's Colombians, there's there's narco traficos now, there, and there's the sense like, oh, like we're a country that doesn't have kidnappings. That's like real Latin America. That's like tropical Latin America or something, which, which there's still not, that's not really what's going on, but there's been like a bit, there's a, there's a Chile reaction to the sense of like, Oh, we're being crime Latin Americanized kind of. So yeah, that you've makes been mentioning the, the fear of crime. And I wanted to ask you, it's how been going on for a while. Yeah. How, mm -hmm. how tied into that is that with the fear of, um, because when you were mentioning the FARC, I was like, people in Chile are worried about the fucking FARC. Like, Not really. It's like a away. right. It's like a hard right thing. It's like a hard. Ah, it's it. like it's a hard right thing, but it does have a certain purchase. People aren't really, but like cast and the hard right like does talk about it, and they like say that FARC is in league with the Mapuche, and because there's also like a strong Colombian migration in the north, right. and so it's just both of those get tied up in it. Basically. What about the Venezuelan? Uh... Yeah, the Venezuelan one's complicated too, because like that one has a lot of anger about sense of like two on the left of like oh there's like a right wing Venezuelan migration that's like I have friends who will, like show me their phone and like show me like seven fascists in their building they have saved in their phone is like fascist one two three four and like most of them are Venezuelan right and so then there's this sense of like oh there's this much. Like there was a bad incident where um, Iskia, who has now been removed from Boric's cabinet, but she was like accusing, which the right wing has not been very nice to Venezuelan migrants either, actually. Uh, like, but she was accusing Piñera, the right wing president, of like that there had been a plane deporting Venezuelan migrants back to Venezuela, and that he just let the plane return. 
And this is like on the center left. It's just like, okay, well, neither of you are like good. And I've, n there's like a sense of like, yeah, like the North too went hard for reject and like people who in my view would have been center left before really will go off about like Venezuelan tropical people who are right wing, but from the left, you know, and it's just like, ah, uh, it's a mess. It's not good. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ask you how that, how that particular xenophobia coded, because I was like, so yeah. on one hand, you're looking at refugees from Maduro and I, I the, the, the stance of uh, Borak towards Maduro has not entirely been clear to me. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, not not tanky pro, but yeah, like kind of a certain like like someone uh, who would have been able to like play in a room with Chavez more, but there's sort of like a distance, but a not so dissimilar from the Bachelet point of right. view. But he's definitely like takes a stand that's different from the communist tanky left on Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. With Maduro specifically, I don't know his full stance, but he's not going to like fully reject or fully cozy up to him. I think. So, so sort of like the workers party in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's, but it does seem like maybe a little less, a little less like oil. But. Okay, yeah. A little <laughs> less oil ties, a little less OPEC. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one thing I was also trying to figure out, um, then so you have this, the, the, potentially you have a, a left-wing immigrant backlash for one specific group and a right-wing mm -hmm. immigrant backlash from another group that's pretty close, like, mm -hmm. like yeah. geographically, not politically, but geographically, in some ways ethnically, yeah. um, to, uh, to the Venezuelans. Um, yeah, yeah, like you the know, the sense of a tropical, a tropical migration, and the right. sense of like, oh, these are people who are, you know, in my building and playing music all night, like this type of racism. They're not know? good, they're not yeah. good, civilized, uh, southern cone Criollos, right? Exactly, like, that's what we're exactly, doing. yes, yeah. yes. Um, and because that, that I have gotten a feel that that's also a, a politic in Argentina. Um, so yeah, I think I would um, assume so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, this seems like kind of a powder keg. It seems like it, it seems like you're. Yeah. It's going to be hard for Boric to do anything now. Well, I mean, yeah. what, what do we think about the future of this government? I don't know. I mean, right now is like trying. I think to. I mean, it's very early in one way. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think. I mean, right now, there's going to be so many eyes on the negotiation for a constitution. Like some of the right wing uh, people have been saying, OK, we are still committed to there being another constitution process. But and then today they're like, wait, the news said we already agreed to it and we don't fully agree yet. We still need like some more technocrat doubling down. And so that's going to be an ongoing thing. I think he's going to keep trying i mean it's just hard because he was already ceding to the center you know before the vote was like look like we can go ahead and edit some stuff if the constitution passes and we won't like go too indigenous and i'm going to put some more centrists in my cabinet but they don't have the congress or the senate right now and so but nobody loves the center so i don't know i mean i think the good thing is that there is a strong left culture and movement culture that's going to keep pressing. And there's been this like loss in a way there's been the whole 2019 process. There's been this loss now. And so everybody knows that the center and the technocracy is trying to win stuff, trying to say like the left doesn't have a, a place to speak, you know, um, like, Oh, these movement people ruined everything. Even Burek did in his speech that he said like, you know, I guess the constitution was too maximalist and yada, yada, but I don't know what's going to happen with the, the move to the center or not. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit slow going right now, but also fast going with a lot of controversy, like always just, there's always a lot going on, but yeah, I think it's hard because they don't really have the power to get everything done. And there's just going to be this constant sense of like, this constitution was horribly rejected and I don't know what what 
where to pick up yeah. those threads. But yeah. Yeah, I, I can definitely see the, the, the kind of bind that you're in because uh, on, on one hand, it seems like, ha, have we seen the Pinera government rehabilitate at all in this, in, in this uh, constitution? Not really. That's the thing that's really, yeah. I mean, no, but that's the weird thing about Chile is because... Because when Pineda won in 2017, because you can only have one term at a time. So it was like right. Bachelet, 2006 to 2010, 2010 to, I don't know, 13, mm. 14, Pineda, then Bachelet again, then Pineda. But in 2017, when he beat uh, Guillermo, it was fun. Yeah, because 2010, 2011, 2012, everybody hated Pineda. Um, I haven't really seen people like actively pro Pineda. And that's the thing, too, that like with the last Bachelet term, everybody hated Bachelet and the center left. It's weird how, yeah, I don't really know what to predict because there's people who I think are like kind of dead in the opinion and then they're not. And so, yeah, I'm not totally sure if Pineda per se, I mean, Pineda was like pretty hidden during the constitution stuff, kind of the whole right, like the whole right tried to like hard, hide their hard right people. And then like when they celebrated, bring them back out again. Mm -hmm. And there's also that like hard right, that cast element that's not in the right coalition, that's in the further right uh, party that also does like a from the right fascism rejection of Pineda, but and that always had that always is like increasing a little bit. But um, I mean, yeah, you, I just think there's different players right now that are trying right. to. It's like ongoing. Well, what I get a sense for sense of right now, and in the conversation with you and in reading. That there's re like where a lot of places there are two factions are in, in Europe there's usually three there's a center faction a left faction and mm. right faction and the right faction's like way right, scarier right. than even the American right is um, yeah and uh, maybe two le two center factions right multiple left factions multiple right 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 right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in Chile it seems like the real players are somehow the Christian Democrats have returned like zombies. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, Boric is still a player, but doesn't really have the power now to do a whole lot. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, no. uh, they're, they're the old uh, Piñera central conservatives, which I guess like when you see this in Europe too, but then there, there is a growing far right yeah, and um, they've had several years of movement culture and a sense of of a left progressive constitution to really they roll out like they don't mess around. Yeah, those are scary people. So I'm assuming they have they have a lot more discipline in the way they handle their maybe not. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know if. Yeah, I don't discipline know. If, may not be the right word. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I mean, they're serious. Like they. <laughs> They have YouTube figures who okay. who so who smoke who who get on their YouTube and like smoke and talk about how the how the dictatorship was fair and a good, the coup was good. The center right wouldn't do that. They would like hide the ball more. Okay, yeah. So there's there's let less outright pinochistas, right? Like yeah, the hard right is like cast puts out like a tweet on September 11th. Like, yep, that was good shit. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We miss our military hunter. Got it. People went uh, in the 2016 election. I saw Cast and I was like at a table with like his kid, like all those right. Like they go to the national stadium where there was like torture. That's where they go on election day. God. Okay. Oh no. These people are serious. Yeah. I've... Like wearing MAGA hats. <laughs> like videoing YouTube shit with a guy's YouTube channel that like puts subtitles on Jordan, Jordan Peterson videos. And you see, that's the that's the interesting thing about this current right in in Latin America, because in some ways it's been it's been slightly altered by the American right, um, in a way sure. that like the old military hunter stuff was in its indirect ties to the CIA, um, but wasn't explicitly. It was more, you know, it was There's more. There's some of that online right too that's like in the U.S. I think that like flirts with like hella like. Like these yeah, yeah, references yeah. to helicopters. And you have your Nick Fuentes yeah, yeah. people, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And you have, and yes, we also have Legionnaires of Christ and Opus Dei, but not to the extent that, like in the 90s in Latin America. No, they have right? actual Opus Dei. <laughs> yeah, they had real shit. Yeah. 
I, yeah. I had an Opus Day student once who like would give me rides and like they like did the rosary every day in their car and they would ask me like a lot of questions about JFK. They're like, so like how much, how do people feel about him being Catholic? I'm just like, I don't, you're like stressing me out right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to imagine you hanging out with someone from Opus Day. Not um, hanging out with, it's like work stuff and sometimes it's just... It's not a, it's not hanging out. <laughs> it's just like sometimes that's someone you end up with a ride and that's got it. <laughs> things that happen, yeah. Um I have members of my family in Opus Day. But uh really? <laughs> yeah, which is weird as a Jew. Um right, no, but, it's not a, it's not good. <laughs> um they got out. Uh so no, I mean, the Opus Dei has like a real connection to like, like hard right and power in, in Chile. Like, oh yeah, that's kind of an upper class like. But, yeah, that when like, I think dire. of the old school semi-fascist Latin American right, that's what I think of. Not yeah, people yeah. who sub who like do Jordan Peterson videos. Although, you know, um, four four or five years ago, I, I would have called Peterson just a conservative. Um, in the last two years, I've, I've, I, his rhetoric has, does remind me actually a lot more of, of, uh, certain figures in the Latin American right. Um, mm. it, it, it's, it's, mm. um, and in fact, I actually have had conversations with former Mexican students about how awesome he was and being very confused. Um, cause I was like, well, oh, yeah. you're a good Catholic. Don't you know he's a heretic? Like you're. Yeah, but he like hits. He like checks certain boxes about like hating women. That is yeah, good fair. Clean, cleaning, <laughs> clean your room and hate women. So <laughs> that goes far. Yeah. Um, so hmm, one thing I was going to ask: um, how how divisive are cultural issues in Chile? Because I oh, I don't get I don't. Get the they same can be on. okay. Yeah, they can be. I mean, there can be. It's kind of like one of those things where you have both really strongly. Like you, you do have like a very strong, for example, feminist uh, gloss, and then also a strong reaction. I mean, yeah, stuff about about LGBT and abortion is like a strong. I even some someone I know like tagged some people about like what do you guys have to read and this guy who like I know in Chile was like saying how oh well part of the problem was the constitution like centered like identitarian LGBT issues it's like okay thank you for that um there but the, at the same time there can be a very vibrant feminist and and LGBT uh culture and so there's both elements but there's absolutely like a strong element of of gender and sexual conservatism and and there's also a strong pushback and certain ways in which probably there is like a more progressive element than maybe in some latin american countries but other ways not so um it's that, it's very so complicated it remarkably similar to like south korea when i left it where we okay. saw the beginning of a feminist movement but we also saw and I've, I've been kept in touch with certain people back there. Yeah. Um, that there is now a pretty virulent insult movement there too. And um, in, in some ways yeah. more virulent than its Western counterpart. Um, you know, as I yeah. like to remind people, a spousal abuse was only criminalized in 2012 there. So, I mean, like, it's not, it's a, it's a much yeah. more yeah. Uh, recent issue. Just, same as like Chile divorce was not, yeah. That was like in the last 15 years and and there can be yeah there's some definite like relationship conservatism as far as like jealousy and a bit yeah there can I be I can't some... remember is Chile one of the countries where abortion is still illegal? Yeah well that was one of the things that would have been in the constitution okay. would have been like reproductive rights and so now it's where under Bachelet where they got three like the three causales the um mm -hmm. Uh, like rape, life of the mother, and um, if the fetus is not uh, viable. But yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that now because uh, that was a big deal too to be. And that was one of the things there was a big reaction against. Like one of Cass' family members who's also, who's the hard right, who's also in 
politics. Like one of that was another big campaign campaign thing for the right was saying how, you know, there would be like, you know, the typical right wing stuff. There would be a, a ninth month uh, abortion on demand or something. I don't know. Just like nonsense like this. Um, so similar but there is a reaction to that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, it's yeah. There's, there's, there's hard reaction. There's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how much, because I, I, I've been, I've been trying to figure out how much these cultural issues played into this. Um, I think they do. And I also think, and I also think there's like a sense of, yeah, I think this sort of center that doesn't vote as much, I think there's a hard sense of like, well, A, you're going to take, I won't be able to pass anything down to my family, my pension, my house, whatever. Bork is some leftist. Nobody's cracking down on law and order issues. There's just nonstop protests. There's migration. There's, and then there is too, just like, oh, this is just going too far, trying to be like woke and trying to be too into this, that, or the other. And yeah, I mean, there's definitely a sense of like not wanting to deal with politicization in a way. Like so, a sense so of, yeah. So one thing I wonder, is this treated, I mean, in certain countries, I, I, like, for example, when I would have this conversation in Mexico, in, in mm -hmm. urban Mexico, uh, reproductive rights were a big deal and sure. it was not questioned. But when I was in, like, Torreon, which is, you know, a mid-sized city uh, up in the north, um, uh, traditional struggle of the pond um, for the mm, Party Action National, the, the, the right-wing ah. party, Vicente Fox's... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pun, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, party. Um, the um, there was there was a lot of talk of of like reproductive rights being either American or European like okay. positions. Does that happen in Chile? I don't know. I haven't see. I've always lived in Santiago, so I've never heard anything like right. that. I don't, and I don't, and I feel like the rural divide is like a little different. Like, it's not as much where it's like, no, we're like authentic. We're, like, there is a rural. Yeah. yeah That's I mean, a good question. But I don't I don't think it's on the same. I don't think it's that exactly. I don't think okay. that's quite the thing. But I also don't live outside Santiago, so I can't say 100%. But well, there's I mean, just there's just like a hard Catholicism that's just like, no, like, we're not doing that. Yeah. And it's not always with this, like, oh, that's the U.S. modernization type of rhetoric, necessarily. It's, well, that was the interesting thing about Mexico is, is in some ways, the U.S. was portrayed as a hotbed of reaction, and rightly. Um, in mm -hmm. some ways, it was portrayed as a hotbed of wokeness, and mm -hmm. not nearly as rightly. And sometimes by the same people. I mean, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it was like a cynical evocation. Yeah. Um, I think you it, can get some of that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's what dominates, but that is, I could see that being a thing. Yeah. But, but it was interesting because that seemed yeah. to displace, there was also hostility to district federal of Mexico city. Um, uh, but it seemed like there was a, a, an attempt to displace the anger. Unlike in America at urban insiders, it was at urban far wayers, like not mm. here. Um, right. and, um, but that was changing too, because just, just, you know, just education levels were changing, you know, um, I think and... there's some of, yeah, there must be some of that. Cause something, yeah. Cause like it goes so right wing that places outside Santiago. I've just always lived in San Santiago, but yeah, there, mu there must be some of that, but I, it might be in a slightly different note. Cause like you said, we're not as close to the U S and so there's both like a strong investment in this sort of Euro U S centrism, but also a distance in some ways that it's not, mm -hmm. it's not the sense where it's like your police are close to each other and the, the people right. are migrating on land. Like it's just not the same. Yeah. The federal also the dynamics compared to with other South American countries, you know? Mm -hmm. I, well, I mean, you know, it's one of the things that I remember people used to ask me to come on and talk about Latin American politics. And I'm like, I lived in Mexico. Right. Like One it's all, yeah, it's the, that's such a huge, like, I mean, it's just a huge body of and knowledge. That country is it's, huge, by the way. Also, so like, there's not, there's not, I've tried to ask people like, what is, it's weird that there's not like more 
media that unites the Spanish language world that's like of different persuasions. Like it, things can get very segmented country wise to an extent. Well, yeah, that's that was uh, that was an interesting thing I noticed when I was in Latin, uh, um, in Mexico and in a little bit in Colombia because I have been there. Um, the 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 way in which the media, on one hand, American media was everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, to a certain TV. degree, I've been told that Mexican media has an outsized uh, influence on at least like. Central America and parts of the, the northern part of South well, and America. and it's big in certain ways in Latin America always, whether it's like publishing and mm -hmm. um, novelas and and old but school stuff like Chavo del Ocho or... Right. You know? like So like Mexican slang, which is actually kind of particular, is pretty well understood. Well, the reverse is not true. Right, like, like people coming so to Mexico. So many slings, yeah. Well, yeah. America. I mean, whole different. Let alone that. Mexico. I mean, Mexico sling. Which one? <laughs> yeah, Chilongo and Norteño and Sorrento. Yeah, 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 yeah. And street I mean, versus middle class are all vastly so many. different. Yeah, there's just um, a bunch. Yeah. And then Chicano and like, like uh, one of the funniest what? things that happened because I because I I, I know Norteño slang that people assume I know Chicano slang and I do not. Right. It's like, right, it's yeah, I'm like, I have no idea yeah, what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, yeah. So um, I felt good about my Spanish when I could start telling what region people were from, even if I mm -hmm. didn't understand them. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, definitely. So, uh, Southern Cone is a lot easier than other places like the islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're way off task now. Um, so, it's your show. Yeah, it is my show. Um, <laughs> so I suppose, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about the about the American left response, their excitement and disappointment, and how yet they don't really have a fine grain. We've talked a lot about how hard it is to get a fine grain feeling, even if you're there. Sure. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of information sources. And... Is how one thing I can't get: how centralized is the government in Chile as opposed to like, so so for example, while. Um, while the Mexican states are fairly powerful, uh, mm. most national, like most, like most government, anything of any note happens mm. around district federal or the central of Mexico. Um, it's pretty centralized. Like the Congress okay. is in Valpo, but yeah, it's always a discourse. It's weird because Allende had some decentralization stuff, but so did Pinochet. And it's also mm. a thing that's often on the left agenda too, is decentralization. Um but yeah, it's it's relatively centralized and it's like a huge portion of the population is in Santiago and there's definitely pushback to that, but it's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. relatively not decentralized. So what like the regions the... don't even have names. They have like numbers. Got it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's from the old, old system. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> what, what I remember that, that like came for, up in, in the, 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 yeah, the Cordona <laughs> show and I'm like, oh. Oh okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, and I still don't really know them. People are like, "Oh, Region 7. I'm like, "Which, oh, which city is in games. that one?" Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, yeah. At least um, Santiago is just like the metropolitan region that I can I can remember. Okay. Um. So, so someone's saying they're usually if they're not referred to by they're usually referred to by the names of their capitals. Um. I appreciate I appreciate the 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 pushback on naming things. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and they're also saying yeah, they go by numbers too. All right, so <laughs> I don't know. That's the, maybe that is a sign of how centralized things are. Like that, I'm that Santiago. Like like I'm like mm -hmm. I'm not totally sure, but also well, I mean, that I'm a foreigner. So that's why I asked because it really does affect. It really does kind of affect the understanding of politics. Um, when mm -hmm. I like, for example, Seoul, which is which is uh, in Korea and District Federal in, in Mexico are so politically dominant. They're also completely separate. They're, they're ran differently. They're, they're not under any, any singular provincial it's, control. It's, it's less that way. It's okay. less that way. Yeah. Cause even Santiago, like you have so many different mayors too, like all the different parts. Oh, so, of Santiago. Okay. So, so it's like, well, cause you have a good. governor for the metropolitan region, but you also have like, you have the center, but there's like a ton, like, I don't know how many. So it would be like be if there were 20, 30 municipalities in, municipalities in Santiago. Yeah, but if you, there's like more of them. Okay. okay. And there's so bigger, like more important ones, but they're all 
they're all like have their own mayor and stuff. So do you, can you can you predict politics uh, based off region in that way or? Yeah, in a lot of ways. In, with the Constitution vote, like, for example, the metropolitan region and Valpo, the other big metropolitan region, didn't go left. But it's interesting, yeah. Like, in Santiago, there were, it went less left than they thought. But there's, like, a couple of the biggest, like, lower middle class suburbs did vote upright, like Maipú and Ponte Alto. And then one that's more upper middle class and traditionally progressive, Nunoa one that's like really poor and traditionally hard left Pac. And that's just a few, but there's mm -hmm. definitely like a lot that people traditionally do of like the upper class, like Eastern few rich neighborhoods. Yeah. I mean, tend to go pretty solidly fascist on average and things vary in the lower middle-class parts of the city and such, but. Yeah. So this, this is, this is an interesting Thing for me to think about. So, for example, um, in both the United States and Britain, the patterns are urban, progressive. However, it gets weird when you look at income levels where, um, where, for example, in the United States, or is this also true in Britain, like Corbynistas did have a fairly strong, like lower income backing in the cities, but not in mm -hmm. the not in the north. Um, where, yeah. but there's also a strong upper income backing. Is that, is there similar there's patterns in Chile? There's some or? of that. There's a little bit of that. That's like, yeah, that's like kind of what people will say about like Nunoa is like a middle, which is where like the national stadium is. And that's sort of the place they would say about that. But there's also upper middle class or upper class places that are seen as more, it's kind of like there's like places you can live if you're upper middle class that are seen as like a little more progressive. Mm -hmm. Or for example, where I am Providencia is like the like middle class, upper middle class place that's like the other center from the center. And you have this mix where you have like old people or middle aged people who have apartments who are like hard fascist. And then you also just have like a lot of people who live in an apartments and are young. And because it's like kind of the center, like, for example, when you have the big protests, those are right on the border of the center and Providencia. So sometimes you'll have like a hard right fascist mayor, like turning the lights out on people. And then it's also like right next to Santiago and like urban. But then you have like the further hard right places that, you know, there's places that are like pretty far, like Barnechea or Vitacura that just have like a hard right reputation. Whereas you have other places like that are further to the east, like east of Nunoa towards the mountains, you have La Reina, which is like, again, like center right ish, but it's the kind of place where they, you know, that's like near where Victor Jara lived or stuff, you know, like, it's just, it's a little, it's like a more progressive upper middle class, if that makes sense. Mm. But it, and there are always elements of like, yeah, there can be a reaction on the left and right against, there can be the sense of like, you know, that Bachelet, for example, of the center left, that she was of that kind of like respectable, um, progressive upper middle class. But I mean, it's like everywhere that there's some of a little bit of everything. Like there's definitely like people who have um, a strong progressive lineage and, you know, maybe their families were sort of professionally involved in the Allende governments. And the same thing where you have people who are more populist left now who grew up in just a huge swath of kind of little lower middle class suburbs who maybe, maybe their parents were like police or kind of like Pinochetista, but like not, you know, just sort of, or apolitical, but are like relatively left now. There's just, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different dynamics and all different, you know, okay. kind of what you would expect, I think. Right. Like, so it, 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 it it's a more complicated dynamic than, than, uh, than simply, you know, upper class uh, right winger fast adjacent lower class not yeah although there are people who would portray it that yeah there's sometimes okay. an attempt to portray it that way but then it kind of betrays itself a little bit i mean there are people who try to be like um like on the right who will claim like they say like facho pobre like which i guess roughly translates to like poor fascist um mm -hmm. and there's some awareness of that but there's also people who try to like have a hard class read so and there are, yeah, I, it, 
yeah, the reaction to like an upper middle class progressive thing, I don't think dominates, but okay. there, there can be some of that. Right. I mean, I, it, it's when, cause when I was talking to Camilo about, uh, Camilo about Peru, right. it was right. like trying to get a, the, the progressive, the progressive left was seen as very European centric and very urban, if not just mm. outright upper class. Um, it's but, interesting about European. That's like much more of a Peruvian dynamic than right. You know, yeah, uh-huh. there's than a Chile. Lot, yeah, the, the well, the, yeah, the indigenous politics in 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 Peru, and I've had them explained to me by multiple Peruvians, including my ex girlfriend, and I still have. I do not cannot wrap my head around it. Like, Sounds I, complicated. I, it, yeah, it, it, it seems very, very, very complicated. Yeah, um, because it's there's not just. Criollo, like Quechua tensions. There's also Quechua and other indigenous tensions, and like, um, seems like the rural urban is like more marked too in the way yeah. that you're saying. I would say, um, it definitely seems so, and it, it's yeah, and it's, or mark mark it in a different way too. I right. think in a way that does map a little differently. Right, um, and so it's uh, it's. It's very hard <laughs> for me to wrap my brain around. Um, and, you know, that's, that's kind of the poetry of it, though, I feel like is like for me. I mean, I've been here. I still feel like a fucking American. I've lived here like over a decade of my life. And I, I could hardly put two and two together about Peruvian and Argentine and Bolivian politics. And I care more than most people and try to read more than most people. And you can forget on the left, like if you're especially nerdy that way is like, how much people don't even hardly know shit half the time. And in that way, it is interesting to see what does register in that way, the sense with Democrats of loss or of Chile or yada, yada. But there is a poetry to the sense of like, that we all just have like so much to to learn. Right. Well, it's one of the interesting things in 2005. Yeah. People were following like, uh, you know, Chavismo and and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but, Mm -hmm. but for, for the most part, Except for like weirdos who followed Shining Path, are um, hmm. are people who would follow Latin American politics and deal with like the demilitarization of the FARC or something. Um, right. Nobody. Chile knew- always had a Yende. Right. Get. But still, I mean, Pinochet is like even less famous than people, you know, like is less famous than people think than like somewhere like England. Pinochet is more famous than in the U.S., I think, actually. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's probably true. I mean, yeah. like if I'm just talking to my parents, they they like, I, you know, my parents are not they're not hyper educated, but they're not educated. I don't think they would they would have not have any sense of who I was. It, it, it was something that I learned coming into the left and I did learn it. Yeah about say 23 years ago but it you know it wasn't like it was a household right. word and i, I think you're right. right about that yeah. um i mean hell i don't think yeah. most people like one thing i i've been pushing back on a little bit um and with this is i'm like i'm glad you guys care about latin america but you really should know the fine grains of mexico because your supply chain is totally integrated yeah. with theirs and like it's like an ethical yeah, consideration. It, it, it's like this giant neighbor. It's like yeah, uh, you know, of, it's of like which, a really important country. <laughs> uh, you know, of which like you know something like a, a third or a fourth of the country used to be part of, and like yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. like it's in it's, the same hemisphere. I mean, right. yeah, it's, like it's, yeah. It, that uh, that is a very annoying American thing. You know, that's which like, I mean, just trying to explain who the pre are to people and they just look at me like I'm yeah. nuts and I'm like, yeah. but, and that's part of what's hard with something when you're asking for like fine grains on AMLO. Cause like so many of the people are already like, it's already good. They like know who no AMLO, AMLO is, is. And feel that they like figured out something. They're like, I'm progressive now. And so it's like a good step in a way, you know? So, it, but I think, I guess the call is to just, deepen the the knowledge and interest and realization that things are maybe the u.s is particular in a way that you know maybe it's oversold the extent to which there's regional differences and maybe in maybe chile's a little i don't know i think people don't take i think people take for granted the complexity other places partly because the u.s is not as not as varied as we think it is 
in some places it is, but not ex not in quite the same way. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe so everywhere is complicated. I don't know. The, the last question. This isn't. This isn't. To, I, I try not to stump people, and this one might be a little bit of a doozy. So okay. I'm going to be a little I'll bit. Try my best. Um, but um, how affected uh, is uh, Boric government by? the feds rate hike because i get a feeling some countries in oh. america are more exposed than others um well so marcel is definitely like tried somewhat i mean they are too they are too like compromised in terms of like foreign mm -hmm. debt and such but not in the way of somewhere like argentina where they have like the imf bearing down their neck or not in the way where they're like pegged the dollar or anything like that, mm. but absolutely in the way where they have a, a strong export economy and definitely are affected uh, inflation wise by the Fed rate hikes. I mean, and are affected by things everybody's affected by, right? With, with weed and with gas and um, yeah, there's been strong inflation and things like the housing market and meat. And I mean, these things go up and down and, and the, the guy, Mario Marcel, uh, sort of mid i mean kind of middle of the road but keeping doing his own rate raises that don't really help with that so yeah they're affected i would say yeah and, and i think that was a political issue along with um along with covid depolitization in a way and just an ambient sense that there's a an unstable economy and um you need to crack down in one way or another and in various ways the Boric administration has played to that like in a lot of ways like no we're compromising we'll raise rates we won't spend too much um yeah, but well, also I mean, there being a sense that they are spending a lot um yeah well it, it's one of these things where i'm always confused about left like about about center left governments because on one hand i'm like you're gonna get accused of spending too much even if you were more austere than your right-wing yeah. counterparts like that's inevitable it's just there's um, yeah there's but Chile, I guess they're I've said this to people that the, the left in Chile is like not super heterodox econ pill. I, they're not the worst, but they also are orthodox in a lot of okay. ways. So it's hard. There's, there's. <sighs> How much has post Keynesianism had in any influence in Chile? Not really. It doesn't really, okay. it doesn't really have like a presence. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping longer term it can over time with that the fact that it has some influence other places. And it seems to me like a place where that could be true, but there's still a strong element of like a progressive gloss without any of that, you know, like without mm -hmm. even that pe having penetrated in any way at all. And so it's hard. And part of it's, I mean, part of it's stuff like, yeah, the sense of reaction about about the pension, the private pension funds, about uh, healthcare. The I mean, these attachments almost to these these right wing elements. Um, so how, how private? How private is healthcare? In, in there's a mix. I mean, there's a mix. There's like a very privatized element, and there's a, um, a public system that's not that great. Okay, it's so like so. It's very similar yeah. to Mexico, where there's a public system, but it's the shittiest um, public system we've ever encountered, and yeah. like. And I say this as a person who want you know wants to defend public health care, but if I got it, if my only model for public health care was what I got in Mexico, which was basically the state because they pay for doctor's education makes you work in the public health clinic twice a week for free for like your first ten years, and so everybody hates it, hmm. and it's completely yeah. underfunded, and they don't even have needles, and you need to bring your own wait lines. And, yeah, yeah, and that's a thing that would have been pretty politicized, and goes both ways, where people both are attached to the sense of like, oh, I might have to be on the public system, and that we should make everything public, and there's that tension because there's mm -hmm. the sense of both of knowing you're getting fucked over in the public system, but also then. Um, reaction against that like see how bad the public system doesn't work and so therefore we need this private system yeah it's it, it that element of latin america i don't know if i answered well the i mean i think i think there's space for a heterodox econ but it's not fully carved out or is there any movement yeah. um in chile for what lula is proposing for like a south american currency zone 
Um, I, think I think Bodic did say he would be for that. I know that there was a controversy. Andres, Andres is pro that Jesus in Mexico is, is anti. I think it could be possible. I mean, I think, yeah, like, I think there could be, they would, they would get on board. The center left would get on board with whatever, like the Latin American mm-hmm. left, I mean, if center left is doing, honestly. Right. I mean, they're if you not, get... but they're not somewhere like Ecuador with the dollar or somewhere like Argentina with IMF, but they are right vulnerable in different ways as far as exports and yeah they're not necessarily in a sovereign debt crisis but they are vulnerable no. to export exactly yeah. and shout yeah. out to some people who've sent me some articles about chilean economy i have to constantly learn a lot more <laughs> well that's the, that's the <laughs> thing about this is the problem when you do economics podcast it's like your your learning curve is fucking infinite like well that's the just, thing yeah it's like even if you're just like such a beginner you're ahead of so many others but then at the same time people then like expect you to know everything and you're like i don't right. actually know everything <laughs> at all you're asking to predict, like, but what then it is seems this? like you don't know anything so you're just like i'm trying my best <laughs> yeah it's it, it's one of those things when you start digging into to even standard economy, definitely once you start getting into heterodox models and someone asks you, well, what if this person, like, what, what, oh. one of the ones I got is, would Grexit be possible if they'd have used uh, um, a cryptocurrency as a as a foreign mechanism to develop their own? And I'm like, how the fuck would I know? It's a nightmare. No, it's like, a nightmare. Like, I have and no idea. You, I mean, that's what, <laughs> shout out to a book coming out, Jacob Feinig, uh, mm-hmm. with the monetary silencing, kind of says how this was a big, in the US, this was a, you know, monetary politics were big and that in a way the New Deal silenced that. And I think that's part of what is interesting to me that I don't actually know it all at mm-hmm. all. But what's relevant is like that, that even just the claiming it as political and saying, I do think we should know about this stuff and or try to like talk to people who know, because it is not something on average that we're really taught, even when we are like more literate politically. I mean, it's, and, and that does have an effect on policy in certain ways. Like it's just not, I mean, part of it is, yeah. I mean, part of it is the, the econ Academy too, as far as policy and right, donors right, right. and all this stuff, but there's still, I mean, there's a lot, I mean, it I mean, matters I mean, that the left be literate in these things. I mean, and, or one, at least express a desire to be. <laughs> right. I mean, well, one of the things, for example, is that you and I, uh, while we don't always agree on monetary policy, uh, I have been just as aghast at you at reading certain leftist critiques of MMT where I'm just like, that's just not true. Like, right. Well, they just there's... aren't trying or they want to like not. Yeah, there's some people who know it's wrong and they just like want to let it be, but it's yeah, it's depressing to me the like lack of engagement that that pretends to be engagement is like frustrating. Like seeing leftist parrot right wing talking points about somehow Sri Lanka being the fault of MMT, and I'm like, no, no, and no. No, it's like, just like yeah, like if you, there there are things to critique MMT on, and most uh-huh. of them for me have to do with like how you deal with the uh, with being forced into trade parity as an export nation. But well, yeah, which um, is which is where you know MMT with somewhere like Sri Lanka has to like work on messaging, maybe in a way. We're just like, just like a Sri Lanka was not MMT's fault. Like, okay, I don't know if that's like the best putting our best foot forward to just <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, we didn't do this, but <laughs> yeah, but but because you do have to engage with like what made it hard with exports but that does in the end reaffirm the frame mm. if that makes sense i mean i know we've been through i think yeah, I mean, we, I think we, people we, know we pretty before. good where we fall on these issues yes, but, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and they know that yeah. like you and i don't exactly agree on this but we do we often are both like i'm often like you know for all my disagreements with you that article's really dumb like it's well it's just like a boring yeah i mean it's just like a very i mean the reality is it's just like hard money orthodoxy in the world where people are still taught like barter and people are still taught the hard money economic models if they're taught them at all without money i mean which is part of what is important about post-keynesianism and mmt right is this institutional realism and this interest in the numbers beyond absolutely beyond models 
But I'm floored when people make gold standard arguments when they're also not gold standardists. Where I'm like, but you can't believe that, right? Like, you're not. There are Marxists, for example, who are gold standardists, but they're not the people writing this article because everybody thinks they're crazy. Like, yeah, there's just, there's just, there is like a deep knee jerk thing about like the must uh, with deficits that I think things get all mixed up about foreign accounts, about the the national Mm -hmm. deficit, about banks, about. Where the about treasuries. I mean, I just everything is like a mess, and there's this sense of like more means it's the 80s and it's like a junk bond, and you have a house in the Hamptons. Like that's too much spending. I don't know. And so the, <laughs> I don't even I don't even know, but there's just like this sense of like raw math that is like nonsensical math in a way, but it feels right to people. And so there's and yeah, there's just malpractice in different ways of people wanting things to kind of feel a way they feel they should feel and they're not really trying. This and, and this is this is an issue for me. I mean, like for for all that we talk about and we might have disagreements about this or that element of this or that monetary theory or just general finance. Um I get very frustrated with a lot of the left when they talk about these international issues because they don't even have a beginning of the comprehension right. of these issues. And right. or that wanting makes them to know they need to know it. Or, right. Know. Which makes them vulnerable to picking up right wing talking points that are just wrong. Um, no. uh, you know, like the number of times I have heard that. Um, X country and X, you know, who's having X currency crisis was doing MMT. And I'm like, no, they weren't. Like, what? I mean, also this whole doing MMT thing is such a like weak thing. Cause I know, we, I mean, certainly MMT has a prescriptive element. And so, but there is like a still a realism frame as far as like, you know, you could be like in theory, somebody who's totally aligned with your viewpoint on pessimism about trade and be like still calling yourself a well yeah here as a frame in theory like there's like you know what i mean it's still i don't know there's like a basic epistemological block on some level i don't know the, the, the one thing i will say is is while there is with the exception of inflation and i'm not going to get into that right now um there is a general um, descriptive framework in MMT that it's agreed upon. Um, Chartalism, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the Chartalist framework modified by post Keynesianism right, pushed right. together. Um, yeah. And um, that's agreed upon. What is not agreed upon is policy implications, the relationship to the nation state, uh, what we even mean by sovereignty versus like credit autonomy, etc. cetera. Um, those are all contested. But in some ways, and those contestants are political. Those contestations are politically important, and they're politically important even for those of us who do not totally agree with even the descriptive framework of MMT, but do agree with elements of it. I think that it's really important to understand these things and like pretending that we're on some kind of like commodity basket money or something is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but that's I, what people believe from everything they've been told, unless they've thought about it. <laughs> or lear- or heard anything from the right people. It's just, just very few places are talking about this. I mean, on the yeah, left or true. anywhere, right? Even though there's more and more. But even even other former ways, allies no, right? have, I mean, tur- have been turncoats, for example. Uh, I mean, that's like I mean, Krugman's <laughs> like 180 on this shit has been kind of astounding. Krugman I never is, liked Krugman it's to begin fun with. to like trace Krugman just because he's just like so chaos mode. It's just like kind of like fascinating as a media exercise. Like, I'm like, so you're, what all have you said? <laughs> so now you're as hawkish as Larry Summers, but you were a mint a coin person eight years, uh, and he's kind of, 12 he's kind years of in ago. his face. He's one of those people like you kind of look at the photo and it's like you, I feel that you're not totally like consist. I don't think it just has that kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> for like an international econ columnist expert there's a strong sense of chaos mode just from the photo that I yeah don't, I, I, remember I don't get from larry summers larry summers i just feel like he's gonna be mean yes like <laughs> like just wants to kill me like, I don't like know. larry summers think 
just Delete imagine that, Paul Ryan as a Democrat. That's what you got. Like, yeah, he's angry. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I do think a lot of times he's saying what's on the id of Jerome Powell, where he's like, we need to lay off more people. And Jerome Powell's oh, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, but, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Jerome Powell's going to like say the same thing and, and jargon in about two weeks. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. um, it's interesting because without I do think the reason why I'm bringing Sam and T stuff up though is you can't mm-hmm. understand the kind of weird pinch that Latin America feels whenever the Fed fucks with the interest rate if you don't get how subordinated their currency is yeah. to our currency sovereignty. Which, oh yeah, I mean the Fed is fucking places over. I mean most yeah, and, places. Yeah. And <laughs> I was trying to explain to someone the Fed is a, yeah. in a way right now yeah um lays out the world monetary framework for almost everybody but china like right right, right, right. It, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, and it doesn't care that they i mean they care right. that they have that responsibility but they care about it in a reactionary way you know right yeah and so like, mm-hmm. that leads places like like i am worried for example about like um what's going to happen in the Brazilian election in relation to this. And, uh-huh. and, you know, um, will, what's the numbers like with the, I don't, I, I, I figured it, Lula was ahead, but I'm not, he is ahead, but it, no. there's all kinds of shenanigans going on. So uh, like well, it's Brazilian politics. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Messy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Lula is messy. <laughs> yes. Let's say, I mean, even the workers party is kind of messy. Yeah. It seems um, like it. Yeah. It seems like it. So I guess everywhere, but yeah. Brazil seems particularly complicated. No, no, it does. It does. Yeah. 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 Um, um Brazil, I mean especially Mexico- too with like the history with Cardoso and like yeah. kind of that he was like the center left, but that also had like economically, but that had I mean Perry Anderson like wrote him up not so bad and then she, like right. he had a yeah, and then Lou uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's thing. it's a mess. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on and well, thanks for um, having me on again i hope people, i did justice to the topic and i think as much as anybody can. i know it's hard <laughs> yeah there's there's a limit to perfection but you try no trata. No trata yeah. de ser lo que fue. um <laughs> thank you for coming on and people thank should check you. out what, what shows are you doing right now what are you doing shows? medium femme and i'm doing superstructure which are both okay. within the money on the left heading uh, Medium Femme with Charlotte Tavon, Superstructures with Max Sejo and Will Beeman, and sometimes Scott Ferguson, Andres Bernal are on, and then the main Money on the Left show is Max, Scott, and Billy Sass. And that's okay. all. If you search Money on the Left, you can, I think, find everything. Right. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you okay. so much. Have a good evening. All right. Later. Bye. Bye.